In this video, we'll analyze the Tampa Bay Buck Kansas City Chief Super Bowl showdown slate, including construction of a cash and GPP lineup on both DraftKings and FanDuel, and it's all coming up next. Hello everyone, I'm Eric Lee with the Fantasy Football Consultants. Can you believe it? We are going to have a full NFL season. Despite the health crisis, we made it. The Super Bowl is a mere 10 days away. And I would like to thank all of our FFC community. Thanks so much for watching our content all year long through the regular season playoffs and now previewing the Super Bowl. If you are new to this channel and haven't yet, please hit that red subscriber button. It also will make you eligible for all our subscriber content and contests that we do for our subscribers, free entry to win real money. All right, this video is really all about the Super Bowl showdown slate. Now, to get the most out of this video, we strongly recommend that you check out our how to win the showdown slates on DraftKings and FanDuel. These are proven strategies to look at any showdown slate, how to analyze it, the importance of selecting the right captain, the importance of analyzing the game script. Do you think it's a high scoring game? Do you think it's a low scoring game? Or do you think it's going to be a blowout game? And then it tells you how to construct those lineups. I'll put the link up above. Um, it is actually a bonus class as a part of our NFL DFS Masterclass. Just in general, in doing NFL DFS on DraftKings and FanDuel, if you want to get sharper, and if you haven't watched this recently, I strongly recommend check out these on YouTube. We'll put up the nine class series completely free. Everything from the beginner class, which labels the top 10 tips to be successful, uh, to picking the right contest, and then a deep dive on all the positions and picking the right quarterback running back, wide receiver, tight end, and defense. And it closes with a deep dive into cash game strategies and GBP strategies. So let's get into today's video where we will take a look at the Super Bowl slates, uh, showdown slates, and we will construct a cash and GBP lineup. Let's start with DraftKings, and then we'll move on to FanDuel. All right, everybody, we're going to fill out our cash lineup. And again, remember, that means like a double up or a 50-50 where it's a very flat play out. And therefore, what you want is just a high floor because if you can finish roughly in the top 50%, you can going to get the same payout as if you finished uh, in the, you know, uh, at the very top. So what are we going to do to ensure that we get a high floor? We got to get the captain spot right. And immediately when you look at this slate, and you got to love uh, Pat Mahomes, Kelsey, and Hill, uh, I think you attack Tampa Bay in the air. They're the number one ranked uh, rush defense. But here's the problem. They are super expensive. DraftKings did a really good job. So not only at the captain spot do they pay one and a half times their production, on DraftKings, you've got to pay one and a half uh, the salary. So because of that, I'm going to save some money in my captain spot and pick Leonard Fournette. I like Leonard Fournette because I think he still gives us that really high floor. How do you attack Kansas City? Well, you actually attack them on the ground more than in the air. And if you haven't heard the news flash, Leonard Fournette is the lead back on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, taking over for, um, for Ronald Jones. And Jones will still get some carries, but Fournette will out-carry him. And most importantly, in a game script that I expect Tampa Bay coming from behind, it's all Leonard Fournette in the passing game. I love his production in the passing game, especially on DraftKings, which has a full PPR. So By picking Leonard Fournette in the captain spot, I can do something which I like to do in my cash game, which is get both quarterbacks. Why is that so valuable in cash games that have both quarterbacks? Well, they provide you the highest floor of any position, the quarterback position. 
And by the way, in a game that has a 56 over under, man, you really can't go wrong with Pat Mahomes and Tom Brady. Tom Brady is at a very reasonable $10,000. Now, I know Pat Mahomes is $12,000. And sometimes we say that you may not want to pay up for those premium quarterbacks because they don't always return their value. But I think this is a unique situation with the really high over under with the fact that temp, you attack Tampa Bay in the air, not in the ground, because Tampa Bay just happens to be the number one rated rush, uh, rush defense. And throwing the fact, even though he's a little hobbled, uh, Pat Mahomes will run, uh, especially around the goal line. All factors that make me really excited to have Mahomes and Brady in my cash uh, lineup here. Where do I go from here? Well, I need a guy that has a high floor and you can look for a long time and you can't find someone who has more of a high floor than Travis Kelsey. Do you realize the last six games, he has gotten double digits in targets? Do you realize in the last six games, he has scored a touchdown in every one of those games? And even going beyond that, and uh, he had a, a tough game against Denver. But before that, uh, very involved in the offense. Th there's no question that uh, he'll be heavily featured. So love the fact that we can get Travis Kelsey in our lineup. And if we think Mahomes is going to have a good game, you got to think Kelsey will be a big part of it. Now, look. You can choose to go with Tyreek Hill as opposed to Kelsey if you like. I like Tyreek Hill more for his ceiling. So spoiler alert, he will be in my GPP lineup. But I like Kelsey for his floor. So I opt for Kelsey in cash games. All right, where are we going to go from here? Well, guess what? The party's over. Skabar is spending a lot of money. I only have $5,300 total salary among the last two players in my flex. So I've got to save some money. At $3,000, the next guy I'm getting in my lineup is Rob Gronkowski. Look, I know, I know. Just look at the game log. He hasn't been featured. In fact, some people uh, are believing that Cameron Gate, great break, is the, uh, is the key or the better tight end. But break's a lot more expensive. I have no problem going with Gronkowski. This is the Super Bowl. Uh, I think he's going to come up big here. He doesn't have to come up big, actually. For just a $3,000 salary, we don't need much. And by the way, the, uh, Kansas City and Tampa Bay played earlier this year, and Gronk had a very nice game, six receptions on 106 yards. If he can just give us half that, three receptions on 53 yards, that's a fine performance uh, for a $3,000 salary. All right, the last player. I actually was thinking about um, Byron Pringle in this spot until uh, it looks like Sammy Watkins is going to play. And if he's going to play, it's going to greatly hurt uh, Pringle's uh, snap count and his involvement in the offense. So I am going to go with Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones, I already said that he's not the lead back, but he's going to get some carries. He also has a chance to get a, a carry around the end zone. So at only $2,200, basically DraftKings is begging us, getting on our hands and knees to play Ronald Jones. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I am fine with that. It is a little bit of a hedge for cash game against Leonard Fournette in my captain spot. Now, I want to be super clear to everybody. This is a cash game. I would never put Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette in a GVP because I'm looking for a super heat, uh, high ceiling. But I think Ronald Jones, at his price of only $2,200, will really help us help this lineup get a high floor. All right, let's move on to GPP. GPP. Remember, when you're playing GPP, it's all about crafting a story of how you think this game will go. In addition to that, now we do care about things about ownership uh, percentage, and we do care about trying to differentiate our lineup. We don't want to have the same lineup as a whole bunch of other people. So even if it goes completely off, we might have 
uh, to share the pot. So those are some of the things we should keep in mind. Let's start. Who is going to be our captain? I am looking for someone with a high, high ceiling. And folks, there's only one guy who I want to start my DraftKings lineup as captain. It's Tyreek Hill. If you're wondering, how can Tyreek Hill have a high ceiling? Well, how about go back to the game against Tampa Bay earlier this year, where all he did was catch 13 passes for 269 yards and three TDs for an absolute absurd 60 <laughs> DraftKings points. Um, I, I really like having Tyreek Hill in the captain spot. What does that mean? Well, if you're going to have a wide receiver in your captain spot, you pretty much have to have his quarterback, Pat Mahomes, in your lineup. And I have no problem with that because, as I mentioned before, you attack Tampa Bay in the air versus on the ground. All right, who else am I going to use in this lineup? I admittedly just spent a lot of money for my first two spots, but I'm going to spend even a little bit more uh, on the Tampa Bay side. Look, the over-under is 56. The story I am going to tell is this is going to be a shootout back and forth with Kansas City maybe taking the lead often, and therefore we're going to need uh, Tampa Bay to be throwing the ball. Well, they have a lot of weapons, right? But who's the weapon who's the healthiest and the most reliable? Don't forget, Mike Evans and Antonio Brown, I think they both will play, but they're both coming off injuries. The guy who's 100% healthy is Chris Godwin, who, by the way, continues to have a great rapport with Tom Brady. Where am I going to go from here? Again, in that concept that they're going to have to throw the ball a lot because they get behind. I'm going to pick another weapon in Antonio Brown. I like Antonio Brown here in this very big game. I mean, the guy has been injured, but I am going to watch the news super closely. Obviously, if I have any doubts that Antonio Brown is 100%, I will pull him out of this lineup. But um, I am going to assume here 10 days away uh, from the Super Bowl that he is going to be uh, good to go. All right. Where do I go from here? Well, I want, if I have Pat Mahomes in my lineup, I want to have another wide receiver threat besides Tyreek Hill. Therefore, I am going to look. I, I, I like McCall Hardman, no doubt about it, but I can save some money at $4,200 and get Sammy Watkins. Here's another case where I need to make sure that I'm comfortable that he is indeed 100%. But my gosh, guys, he got nearly 100 yards in last year's Super Bowl. He's someone who has a long history with uh, Pat Mahomes. So do I think that he could uh, come up with a big game? Absolutely, I do in this situation. So $4,200 is a very fair price for who I think is the number two wide receiver option on Kansas City, assuming Sammy Watkins is 100%. All right, the last spot, I only have $3,000, $3,200. And look, you can go a variety of different ways here, right? Um, I don't, I'm a little worried about having too many wide receiver options on, uh, you know, passing options on Tampa Bay. So I am actually gonna fill this lineup with the Kansas City chief defense. Now, the story I'm going to say is that the Kansas City is going to get up. And if they get up and force Tampa Bay into having to throw the ball, you know, some good things can happen for that Kansas City chief defense. The chief defense looked really good against the Buffalo Bills last week, putting a lot of pressure on, um, on Allen. And uh, Allen's a lot more mobile than Tom Brady. So I think we can potentially see uh, some sacks here, maybe a key turnover. So as far as a possible ceiling, I like what the Chiefs give me versus the other options that are that cheap. Uh, so that's my lineup with $600 to, to spare. So when I look at this lineup, 
Is it a big differentiating lineup? No, I can imagine besides the fact that I'm publicizing this on YouTube, that this is a lineup that other people can come up with. So I am going to monitor the late breaking news heavily and see, is there anything that opens up? Is there any other contrarian play that I can do to swap out uh, to make this lineup a little bit more unique? Because I think Tyreek Hill in the captain spot is not unique. Pat Mahomes in the, uh, in the lineup is not unique. And uh, we'll see about the other options here. Definitely want to hear you from you guys in the YouTube comments. Let us know who are your favorite plays for cash and who are your favorite plays for GBP in this showdown slate. I can't emphasize this enough. Please don't put these two lineups in and go, I expect them to work out because Eric recommended them. These are kind of a first look. Monitor the late breaking news. I got a bunch of players who are questionable. Make sure they're 100%. And also make sure that there's no value that opens up between now and the Super Bowl that you would want to take away. Here's the last comment I want to make again about GBP. You need to decide for yourself what the story of the Super Bowl is going to be. Do you see one team winning in the other? What's the game script going to be like? The story. All right, we're on FanDuel Slate. We got to decide who our captain slash MVP is. And here's the deal. Yes we get paid one and a half times our production. But the difference between FanDuel versus uh, DraftKings is it doesn't cost us one and a half times the salary. So this is my cash lineup. So to me, I really like to put uh, in a cash lineup, a quarterback at the MVP spot because I don't have to worry about the extra cost that it hits me. So, and because I see, whoops, let me make sure in the MVP spot, there's Patrick Mahomes. All right. Likewise, since it's a cash lineup and I'm looking for a high floor, like I said on DraftKings, I can make it work. I am going to put both sides of the quarterback, both quarterbacks in the lineup. I think this is going to be a really high scoring game. I think it's the, the over-unders, which is 56 points. I think it's actually going to go over. So uh, two-thirds of uh, the passing yardage and two-thirds of the touchdowns in the NFL is in the passing game. And by the way, Tampa Bay happens to have the number one rated rush defense. So all points to a lot of passing. So therefore, uh, I like having Brady and Mahomes in my cash lineup. Where do I go from here? Well, just like I said on DraftKings, if I'm looking for a high floor, uh, nothing beats uh, Travis Kelsey. So I got him in my lineup as well. I'm going to have to save big time money. I only can afford 14000 total for these last two spots. So uh, I talked about him in my DraftKings cash lineup. I'm going to do it here uh, only. 6,500 Rob Gronkowski. And basically, if I'm going to put Pat Mahomes in my lineup, uh, I must think he's going to have some uh, passes somewhere. So uh, it's, some are going to go to, a lot are going to go to Travis Kelsey. Obviously, I can't, uh, I can't afford Hill. But I can get my choice of McCall Hardman at 7,500 or Sammy Watkins at 7,500. The decision of where you go completely determines on the health of uh, Sammy Watkins. For now, I'll put McCall Hartman in this spot, but this is something we're going to have to monitor. If we feel that Sammy Watkins is 100%, then we very much would likely want to pivot off McCall Hartman to Sammy Watkins. It's your decision if you want to use this lineup. Whether you go, uh, Watkins are... Hardman. And there it is, my cash lineup. Let's go to GPP. All right, I'm just going to list my GPP lineup. I already talked about why I love having Tyreek Hill given his ceiling in the uh, MVP spot. So that's where he is. Definitely want to put Pat Mahomes in there as his, if Tyreek Hill goes completely off, which is what I need in order for uh, this lineup to do really well in the GPP. Got to go with his own quarterback, Pat Mahomes. Um, 
I am going to uh, tell the story of uh, Tampa Bay having to catch up. And that means Antonio Brown, if he's healthy, and Leonard Fournette. Remember, Leonard Fournette gets heavily involved in the passing game. Um, even in games that Tampa Bay has been ahead, he's gotten heavily involved in the passing game. So therefore, you know, certainly possible if they get behind that Leonard Fournette gets a lot of dump off passes. All right. And then once again, we have that same decision in uh, that last spot. Do we put Sammy Watkins or do we put uh, McCall Hartman? Now, here's what I want to comment on. There is one major problem I have with this GPP lineup why I probably will not use this GP play lineup as my final lineup. I think it's too chalky. I think that it's very likely that other people will have this exact lineup. So therefore, what I'd like to do is not end with a salary of zero. I maybe would like to end with a salary of $1,000 or more just to differentiate this lineup. So I want to see what values open up and see where I might be able to pivot to where I have additional amount of salary. But I wanted to share this lineup as kind of my base lineup that I'm gonna start with and then adjust it as we get closer and closer to the Super Bowl. Also in the, the comment section, please go ahead and put in your FanDuel. Who do you like on FanDuel for GPP or for uh, cash and why? I just want to make a quick comment that I just filled out four lineups and I did not have a kicker in any lineup. It, a lot deals with the pricing, especially Fandle really priced up the, the, the kickers. Um, Ryan Suckup and Harrison Butker, 8,500 is, you know, more than uh, Hardman and Sammy Watkins. So here's the, the thing. I tend to think that a lot more touchdowns are going to be scored rather than field goals, partially because of how aggressive these coaches are. The story that I think is going to happen is fourth and two, fourth and three in field goal range, they very well may go for it. And I think that the coaches are going to kind of realize, gee, to win this game, we're not going to win it just kicking field goals. Obviously, if it's like fourth and 15, they're going to kick a field goal. But I don't think this is going to be a big field goal game. That's why I'm projecting it. And I definitely don't think it's low scoring. And as a high scoring game, that means there's going to be a lot of offense. So I, I, I'd rather the position players given uh, their upside over the kickers. I want to remind everybody that next week will be our official last show of the season where we take a look at the upcoming season and we do a mock draft focusing on the first two rounds. Michael Wiley and I will compete against each other, alternating picks of who we think, if the season were beginning today, would be the top 24 players. Look, we know some things are going to change, but I think there's value to actually doing the analysis of and uh, with the season really fresh in our minds. In fact, when that video is available, we will put the link down in the right-hand corner, and also we'll put the complete NFL DFS Masterclass link in the other corner. And over on the, the right, we'll put that NFL DFS Showdown Slate Strategy show as well. All right, everybody, take care, be safe, and we'll see you next time.